Tuesday morning, welcome back to another episode of Ali's Digger Diary. Gonna have some fun today. <laughs> or not. Um, WD-40. And somewhere in here, track guide. Yes, that's right. We've got another track guide to go and fit. Only this time I don't know how many bro how many bolts how many bolts have broken off into the track frame. Let's just hope there's only one. Um, but anyway, different tactic today. I've got a mag drill, and if they put up any sort of a fight, I'm just going to mag drill them out and retap them because spending four hours on one bolt just it's just demoralising. It really is, but sun is shining so all the more reason to go and get it done today then after that it's to do a, it's it's to get a 500 hour service track guide's the important bit i'm leaving the welder here where it needs to stay these are the days these are the days that you work for Hellfire, what a marvellous day. And I bet you if I wind the window down now, it'll smell absolutely tremendous. Can't beat working next to a harvest in sight. That's a big poncy, is that a buffalo? It's an elephant, that one. Friendly fella. Yeah, look at this. I tell you what though, if the fella hadn't waited at the road end, I don't think I'd have found the digger. That is a fact. Because I'd have set off up that lane thinking, this can't be right. This cannot be right. It's a long time since I've been in these woods. A long time. Right, so we've got four out of four bolts snapped in. And uh, remember in the last one there was the stud that was sitting proud up in the track frame here. Well, all four are fairly flush, sort of, into here. So the... Uh, WD-40 and vice grips isn't going to work. I'm going to try with a sharp chisel, just see if any of them move. Um, I mean, this track's sat low enough down that will probably as quick and as easy drilling them out and then running an M16 tap through. So this job will be slightly different to the last one. Hey, what a marvellous bit of kit that is. That's the tip of the bolt, as you can see. And I've hit it right bang in the middle. Can you see that? Right. That took about 15 minutes or so. Another three to do. We'll get these ones whizzed out now. We've hit a bit of a pothole. Um, these inside two, the drill's only going so far up inside the hole and then it just seems to want to stop. Um, it did it on this last one out here. It did it on this last outside one, but um, it literally, where did I put this? I don't know where I put the stud, but it literally almost broke through and then got no further like, so. Uh, I just braid that one with a punch and it sort of popped the head off. So these two in here won't, it's not gone far enough in, so a little bit annoying. Um, I've only got one bit as well. I just presume there'd be a couple of 14 mil bits in there because in the middle of nowhere. There's a screw fix about half an hour away. Maybe it'll go through there. <laughs> just had health and safety visit. And believe it or not, all boxes were ticked. 
they were happy. Thankfully, I had my glasses on and the fella spotted them coming. He says, just grab your hard hat. He says, what? I don't know Anyway, hard hat on. Right, uh, he's just phoning. He's got a pal just not far away. He might have some good, so we'll see what happens. Right, that is the tracks getting tensioned up. Um, well, what a fight we had getting those inside bolts drilled out. There was something about them that was harder than the outside bolts because we've got another two drill bits and first drill bit went in and just shattered um, and the second one just didn't seem to seem to be as though it was blunt but that one was a brand new one so um, we put the chuck in it I put I drilled it out to 13 For some reason a normal drill bit just a bit of patience and it just sort of slid up anyway it's after four o'clock now but we're all back together I'm gonna rattle the service off now and then uh, got another job to go to believe it or not right, I've got my engine oil draining I've got my hubs draining and I'm just gonna rattle off this service this engine oil filter undone I've got my engine oil sample I'm flying I'm over a bit grey now. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Don't worry. That's it there. Knock that up. It's funny, you get the same part numbered filter, but this one is about a third bigger. How funny that is. Grab a clean rag and tidy up in here. Right, this little filter here is the pilot filter. That's the pilot pump. So it's filtering the oil straight out, straight after the pump before it goes up to the joysticks. And then from there it goes to your valve chest and moves your spools and makes the digger work. So. Oh God, I tightened that up last time, didn't I? Oh, fire. There you go, uh, just a bad angle. The only big ratchet spanner I have is the 24 mil. And that's because it gets used on that job. As you've seen by the amount of servicing that I do every other day. Right, that's the new pilot filter, white. That's the old pilot filter after 500 hours, gray. And that's just with the gears meshing together to gear pump this, so you do get a little bit of dust which goes into the oil, which is why it's every 500 hours. Screw that back on, then go to the other side, do two fuel filters. Right, this is the water and fuel filter going back in. And then we'll do the primary filter, which is that one there. Fuel was nice and clean. This has got the electric lift pump, which is really nice. So there's no pump in a hand primer. Totally spoiled with these 20 ton and above machines. Right. Head back out of there. I wish you remember that. Plug the water and fuel sensor back in. Otherwise you'll get half an hour down the road and the fella on the phone will go, the machine's derated. Right, that one now. Both filters changed. Remember to turn the fuel back on. And then crack that bleed screw. Put a tray underneath it and flick that button. But can't do that with one. Right, there we go. Done the gauge panel update, service complete. Home time. Oh no, wait, I'm gonna. There's a 140 with a knock sensor fault. I'm gonna phone that customer, see if he wants us today or whether it's alright just to run up in the morning and do it because it's not really on the way back from here. But if he wants us, he can have us. It'd be five o'clock now, easy. Twenty-five past five. Better go. 
Tell you what, with these track bolt jobs, I think next time I'm just gonna come with a 16 mil drill bit and just drill right through the track frame and put uh, put nylock nuts on because that was another ordeal really, wasn't it? Anyway, I'd say it's been a bad day, but look at this. Absolutely magnificent. <laughs> this is the best day of the year so far. I am not joking. What is even the temperature? It's only nine degrees, but when you're in the woods there, and it's sheltered. Absolutely fantastic. And I tell you what, it doesn't get much better. This is when you then, this is when you enjoy the job, and I could quite happily go to this next digger. But um, just been on the phone to him there. He says, just leave it till the morning, get yourself away home for your tea. So that's what I'm going to do. See you in the morning. Hello. Choo. Wednesday, Wednesday today. Wednesday today. We should have a Knox outlet sensor fault on this digger. I think from what I've gathered. Look at this machine. Look at the interior, right? Guess the age of this digger, and I bet you won't, but I'll probably tell you. There we go. SCR malfunction, check engine. I'm going to the service menu, pressing these buttons here. Beep, beep, beep. Failure information, real time. After treatment, hashtag one, outlet knox failure. Take that exhaust cover off. Okay, so yes, this machine is a 2016 machine and it is absolutely immaculate. Um, this is the Knox outlet sensor module. As you can see it's slightly different. Than this. Oh no, I'm never going to see that spanner again. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's a different module um, nowadays. Now, I'm just having a look. Um, I don't think I've ever replaced this because if you look here, these bolts are all lined up with the white tipex. It has got new cable ties on because normally the cable ties are grey, but I remember there was a rework that I definitely did with this machine, which is where the knock sensor was in this position, the NH3 sensor was in this position, um, and there was a rework to change it, so you got a new tailpipe, which then accepted the knock sensor here and not here basically um, so these cable ties I've put on about oh, maybe six years ago <laughs> anyway we'll get this off I'll have to try and retrie re retrieve retrieve my 22 mil spanner wherever it went tedious watching me fight on with cable ties Gonna come out of there yet. I think there might be one more cable tie down there. Yes, there is. E man. Right. 12 mil socket there. And I need to go and find my 22 spanner. Found my 22 mil spanner once I took my specs off. Right down there. Sandwich between the hydraulic tank and the diesel tank. How in creation am I going to get that back? Got it back. Right, undo this. Oh, now then, that might need to go. Yeah, never thought this would have been in here for a long time. There we go, new knock sensor installed in about 30 seconds. But there's no real sort of sense of satisfaction doing this because I don't know it just feels <laughs> you almost feel guilty doing it because you know how much the parts cost what a quick job it is to do anyway um i'll put this exhaust cover back on run it up and um get the laptop plugged on and reset everything there we go we are fault free now let's get a picture of the hours there we go. 
Right, we're heading up north into the borders next to a loading shovel. Keep a record of everything you see. Uh, yeah, we're heading up to a loading shovel next to sort some damaged grease pipes out. Okay, I've got my bust pipes off the uh, Z linkage on a 420 shovel. Uh, now then. There's all sorts going on here and I really don't know what to make of it. There's a bit of metal pipe there that's all bent and twisted with what I presume is quarter BSP there. There's like the proper greaser bit on there. That has been fitted to one of the grease points on the Z linkage. And I've never seen a thread like that before. It's a proper coarse thread that I can't match it to anything that I've got on the van, which is ORFS, GIC and BSP. Um, I'm going to put that somewhere safe. Put that with that. Yeah, everything's a fine thread apart from that. So whatever happens, I need a new adapter like that for one of the fittings. We'll just have to go and see what someone can make us, shan't we? Different day, different view, but it's absolutely magnificent. Look at the weather. I'll tell you what I've noticed. Everybody is so much happier and friendlier at the minute. And I think it's because the sun's out. Right, um, yeah, let's go and see if we can get a couple of pipes made up, but I'm not holding my breath because, uh, they just seem a bit spurious. Is that the right word? Spurious. We'll see how we go. Two new pipes and a pocket full of adapters somewhere in my pocket. Hang on. There we go. Mm, might keep them in my pocket. <laughs> right, let's go back and get this uh, shovel up and running. So Lloyd's at Kelso have a hydraulic centre now. Um, there used to be another spot. I wouldn't really say they were even in the area. Uh, they shut down now. So these lot have taken on doing hose making and stuff like that. All in there was very helpful. Well, they all were to be fair. So it's the first time I've been in there and I'll keep that in my back pocket because uh, it's actually a handier spot when I'm up in this area if I do have a pipe, pipe that needs replacing. It's in a handier spot than where the other spot was. That makes any sense at all. I am ready for my lunch, it's half past two. Let's go! Just signed back in again, but look what's turned up. Pertech fan. <laughs> I wonder if they're here to sort some grease pipes out. <laughs> the fella did say like, oh we've got a couple of grease pipes away, should we get Pertech to do it or do you just want to do it? I says, well, I don't really mind like, get Pertech if you want, I mean they'll be able to do it in one visit I would imagine. Oh well, do you want to just come up and do it? Yeah, can do. <sighs> anyway, there you go. This is where I am to work. View like that, I'll just tell you what. What a view. Okay, so what I've done is I've put the pipe that we're gonna fit, I've put a grease nipple into the end of it. Yeah. And I've pumped grease up into here, just to make sure that the pin is gonna take grease. So that's this one okay. The other one to do is that one there that's got a grease nipple in. And then up there, that joint there, that had a bad fitting in, so I'm gonna replace it. Right, so I've got my grease pipes on, you can see. Um, they're a bit longer than I'd like them to be. You can see I've lost a bit in here. Um, but they're all attached up. This is a little bit untidy, but I'm gonna do something about that by using that hole there, hopefully, or even, mm, I could maybe put a P-clip into there. We'll see, it's a work in progress, but what I want is these pipes to be a tidy and B really neat so I want this pipe here to sit over there like that with a cover over it and then join its brother here 
which will sit here like that. Um, and I've got a cunning plan which I will show you at the end hopefully but I'm just tapping these holes out. I do feel like I've not documented this job very well so I do apologise but uh, A I've been chatting away at the driver and B it's after three o'clock in the afternoon. There we go that looks all right to me. Um, got a few cable ties down this bit here. But Dave sent us these they're actually for, if this was running along the chassis rail, you'd put this underneath the piping to stop it rubbing. Um, but, uh, yeah. Looks alright, that. It's actually quite sturdy stuff, that thing. And it'll sort of stop it from rubbing on there, is what I'm hoping. The damn sight better than what it was anyway, because it was just like a dozen cable ties wrapped around this, which had all slidden down here. There we go, so I put a shorter one of these on here to stop it rubbing on there. Put another one on here, stop it rubbing there. Right, that's the, yeah, that's the finished article. Uh, new fitting in there. All this tidied up. Job's a peach. Okay, I presume that'll be a short little video. I don't feel like I've done a good job of documenting things today, but I'll just, this last couple of days. Yesterday I got a bit hot and bothered with them bolts, but the uh, job got done nonetheless. Um, but anyway, whatever you've just watched, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't, let me know. Write a complaint to Ali's Digger Diary in the comments section. Say, Ali, you need to improve more. And I won't mind because the sun's shining. I'm in a right good fettle, so say what you want, but be gentle. There's only so much I can take. Right, if you enjoyed it anyway, click the like button and we'll see you in the next one.